It's the halfway point in your fantasy football seasons. We're going to take a lay of the land, a look at every position, all the top performers, the underperformers, see who's been great, but also who's going to change so that you're prepared for the second half of the season. And we cover what could be the revengiest game of all time. Check it out on today's episode. Zorro.com is where you'll find everything you need for businesses of any size in almost any industry. They have tools, equipment, and supplies for everything you need. Whether you need stuff for industries like electrical, plumbing, manufacturing, or more, Zorro's got it from brands you know and trust. And Zorro.com offers amazing customer service from real people based in the U.S. Visit Zorro.com slash footballers to sign up for Zmail and get 15% off your first order. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Hey, this is Deshaun Hamilton. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm your host for today, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by... Wednesday's best friend. Pretty soon it's going to be every day because Andy's never going to come back. <laughs> I'm going to specify this, Jason. Okay. Wednesday, October 23rd. Whew, best t- friend of the day. <laughs> you didn't give me a year, so <laughs> this is now shoot Mike and Jason best friend day, Ooh. October 23rd. Like well, This is like key to the city day. Ex- exactly right. This is going to be a day where every year from here on out, the Foot Clan will remind us on October 23rd of our great <laughs> friendship and relationship. Someone make a bronze statue. Get that thing upright. Welcome to the podcast. It's the Wednesday edition. That means we're going to be doing some buy or sell news. Thursday night preview. And today we're going to add Man, in a little bit. Mega. <laughs> Megalodon. This is this could it's be a the megalodon. Is the mini ladon the mini meg? And the, what I was talking about is we're gonna add a mid-season review. We're halfway through. We're half- halfway there. Through. <laughs> halfway through the season. Look at who's ranking where. Some of the disappointments. Who's ranking highly, and we think maybe they will not be by sure. the end of the season. Yeah, and, and this is this is almost like, you know, in our off season, we've got, uh, I think, a really great series right after the season concludes. Right. You, you know, the truth of the wider series, the truth series, where we don't just, you know, it's so easy to look at a, a, a season or a, a, you know, a total over a, a large number of games and say, oh, this guy's good or this guy's bad. There needs to be context and you know, we need to know: Are they trending in the right direction? Are they consistent, inconsistent? So we'll we'll cover some of those things today. And for example, mm-hmm. we can do a snapshot right now. The wide receiver eighteen is Will Fuller. <laughs> He's, Will uh, Fuller had that smash week number one against the Atlanta Falcons, but other than that, he has finished no higher than wide receiver thirty-seven and. That was kind of a good game because every other game he's been outside of the top 50. So but, the he's, wide but he's 18 because he wide receiver, the smash. Yes, the wide receiver 18 on the season sounds like someone you would want. Incorrect. But that's just a, a little brief preview of the Truth Series, which is a ways away. I mean, that's after championships and everything. But, Jason, it is Wednesday. That means we must buy or we must sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Coming off a week where I was five for five, a little upset, a little disappointed in myself. We got two. We try to make these more difficult, Mm -hmm. but we got two, and we just want to highlight the ones where we differed. Gardner Minshew, top 12 quarterback. Correct. By me. Well, yes, I did not believe he would be, and I was incorrect. But you, Derek Henry, you bought in that he would not hit the 100 rushing yard mark. He hit 90. Mm. And this is the second time that Derrick Henry has crushed me by the smallest margin of error. Still crushed, and uh, so we tied. So this week will uh, will be important. Exactly. Week 8, NFC West edition. Tevin Coleman, 70 total yards versus Carolina. He's only surpassed that mark once in four games. 
The Panthers have allowed 70 total yards to four different running backs, including Todd Gurley, Peyton Barber, Duke Johnson, Leonard Fournette. Todd Gurley. <laughs> I don't know why that was his name. Uh, I am going to buy this. Uh, All right. Tevin Coleman, he has not often gone over 70 total yards. However, you know, he's been injured for several games. And then last week was the, the mud bowl. Nobody was getting 70 slosh yards. The slosh fast. And so, yeah, I, I think in this game, Carolina has, a, you know, a, a really good front. But, I, man, the, the 49ers run game with Kyle Shanahan's system, I believe it. I'm going to buy. I am going to sell. And I know it's the total yards, so that's going to involve the passing work as well. It's not that I believe that Tevin Coleman cannot. Just the, the pairing of him, Matt Burita, who – was uh, stuck in a concussion protocol for a little bit. Got his eye poked, but he's back. Matt Breida will be there. I just, so I just think with a split time, we'll see if we can hit 70 total yards. Kyler Murray, top 10 quarterback against the New Orleans Saints. Hmm. In seven weeks, Kyler Murray is four games in the top, two games in the middling, and last week was the quarterback 27 because Chase Edmonds said, nah, bro, I got this. Man, this is this is a really really tough one. The New Orleans Saints defense is obviously very good. The game is at home. We don't know whether or not Christian Kirk is going to come back. This is one where it's like I, I feel like if I knew Kirk was back, I would buy. If I knew he was gone, I would sell. So I believe he's going to be back this week. So I'm going to buy by the skinniest of margins. I do have him right now in my weekly rankings as such. So I will. I will, uh, I will, I will buy. And I, I'm going to sell. Yeah. By the smallest of margins. It's never a good sign when you don't like your own answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm like, oh yeah, that's the right. I say I'm going to buy. You go, I'm going to sell. I'm like, dang it, that's a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to trust I mean, my process. And it's he's right there for me. Right, currently QB ten. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a thin margin. I, I wish. Can we? This should be top twelve. Why? Who made it top ten? That's too the person hard. who wants it to be harder. Chris Carson, top seven running back versus Atlanta. <laughs> How high can we go? <laughs> um, you Week go four. First so he for wants running back twelve, running back nine, running back five, and running back sixteen this past week. I will buy it because I will buy any any chance I get to get production against the Atlanta Falcons. I am going to buy. And I think that Chris Carson can return. Running back 16, it was actually very disappointing if you watched the game. Chris Carson, it seemed like he could get nothing really going. And by the end of the game, it was, ah, man, that's a poor game for Chris Carson. Running back 16. Yeah. So I, I will buy him against the Falcons. I'm going to sell. I think that the Falcons are beatable everywhere, in which case a lot of times they don't need to be beaten on the ground. And using our new tool, the Stream Finder. Oh, my. Which is, this is an unfair advantage for you, Jason. Yes, uh, it's excellent. Now, the last two weeks against the Los Angeles Rams, they gave up the 12th most fantasy points to running backs and the number one against Arizona. So I, I, I get that. But the four weeks prior to that, they did not give up a top 12 fantasy day to running backs. I'm going to say Chris Carson outside the top seven. So we're, we've got three disagreements here. This should make for an excellent show next Wednesday. Brandon Cooks. Top 15 wide receiver. He's only finished there once this season. However, the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm -hmm. Wide receiver, or a top 15 wide receiver, Jason, you're going to buy or sell? Uh, the Bengals are what we call not good. But I, look, I know I made the mistake last week of bodying Jared Goff and not believing against the Atlanta Falcons. And I am starting Jared Goff over Carson Wentz this week. But there's too many options for me to bank on that. I'm going to sell. Yeah, it's tough. Each of the, each of these weeks, so every week of the season, if you combine running back points, the Bengals have given up a top 15 performance. So with all those points going to the, to the running back position, it might be more difficult for Brandon Cooks to get it done. So I'm also going to sell. And our final one here, Larry Fitzgerald, six catches against the Saints. Kind of ties into Kyler Murray. Larry Fitzgerald has been five-plus catches in every game except for last week. 
Well, and and you just said it. He's over five most games, over six several times. He is over the last couple of years a home road split guy where he he does perform better at home. So he's on the road now. Um, oh, I'm gonna I'm going to sell. I think I will it's buy. It's it's ironic that you sold Kyler, but yes. are buying Larry. I bought Kyler and I'm selling Larry. This is on the basis of Christian Kirk being back. Um, and I think that the targets go the other direction. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com, the best sports memorabilia website of all time. Make sure you use the registration code BALLERS. Going to get five bucks to your first purchase. Oh, we have to get into the news, Jason. I don't know if you're ready for this top news item. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. That makes me sad. That drop, like it literally it makes me sad too. But it had to be done. I involuntarily closed my eyes. Sometimes you got to go to a funeral, Jason. It, was, it felt like I I had my own moment of silence for Carry On Johnson. It's it's rough. Uh, obviously, if if you're new and you don't understand, I've been a very big believer in the talent of Carry On Johnson. Perhaps the, the biggest. He was uh, my my guy. I'm not that, just talking about your belief in Carry On Johnson, though, Jason. What what are you referring to? Your your size. Oh, got it. Fat joke. Got it. you got me. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, I thought you were. So I saw you looking for the soundboard. I just assumed you're looking for like the the rim shot. You know, like oh, I got a oh. joke. You're just saying it was fully correct. The computer <laughs> says they've analyzed your body weight, and that was a solid joke. Mm, very nice. Um, yeah, so Carry On Johnson is is out. He's had a couple good weeks, a couple disappointing weeks. Uh, obviously, had his bye week mixed in there. He's been a serviceable back. Now he's gone, and and the question, the question comes, uh, you know, what do you do? Obviously, if if it's not a keeper league, you cut him because the first week he can that he's even eligible to come back. That does not mean he's going to. Right. He might be done for the season because if the Lions keep losing, why would you bring him back late in the year? You know, you're going to have a situation where you go, okay, use the rest of the season, get recovered for next year. But let's say, best case scenario, he comes back. That's going to be week 16. Are you going to play him on that first week? No. Right. You don't know how, he, you know, are they going to monitor him? That's your championship week, or at least that should be. So unless you're in some kind of keeper league or a league where you've got an IR slot where you could just, you know, move him there, I think you have to cut him. And then the question becomes, you know, Ty Johnson, we, we talked about him he, yesterday. He was the big waiver pickup besides Chase Edmonds uh, this yesterday, and I'm sure that the prices went up. I asked on Twitter, what did people spend on Ty Johnson? I saw everything from the 20% – 30%, mid-30% seemed like the most common, mm -hmm. but I saw 90%, 100%. Every, people are all in on Ty Johnson. I had a lot of people asking that question of like, you know, do I do I drop all of my fab? I've got 88 fab left. Do I drop it all? And, I, you know, I would recommend if you really need them, I'm probably, I'm probably spending like 30 because Ty Johnson, I think, he's a, I think he's a decent back. He's very fast, but this will still be a timeshare. You know, yeah, you smooches, J.D. McKissick will be involved. I was going to say, you could end up with a – when you spend a dollar on smooches, you could end up being the better winner than spending $50 on, on Ty Johnson. And guys that could be back, C.J. Anderson, who was cut earlier this season by the Lions. The Saints released running back Zach Zenner, which sh should speak positively to Alvin Kamara returning this week, but he does have the bye next week. You monitor that. But Zach Zenner could be back with mm -hmm. the Detroit Lions – I expect him to add somebody. Kenyon Drake has been tr – they're trying to get anything for Kenyon Drake in Miami is. Maybe they could trade for another back. So, yeah, it's it's not a guarantee that Ty Johnson just has the job for the rest of the season if someone else comes in. The 49ers have acquired wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders from the Broncos. It was a trade of Manny Sanders plus a fifth this year for a third and fourth round pick. Emmanuel Sanders skyrockets to the number one wide receiver for the – San Francisco 49ers. Their depth chart has been baffling, to say the least. Dante Pettis, former second-round pick, seemed like a budding superstar at the end of last season. 
Then you had this offseason where he was the, the guy, his body was maturing, and then he was garbage who shouldn't probably even be on the team. It, it's been very bizarre what's going on with the 49ers. So to me, and this is clear. He's dead. Who? Dante, Pe Dante oh, Pettis. Like, he's, yeah. he's gone. Um, you know, you wonder about some of the injuries to, to Debo Samuel. Maybe he's ha having a little bit harder time. Obviously, Jalen Hurd, their other rookie wide receiver, struggling to come back. But I don't. I don't necessarily think this is indicative of a of a of a longer term uh, issue for Debo. It could be, but this was also a, a situation where the Broncos were very upset with Emmanuel Sanders. John Elway came out talking about how because do, do you remember me bringing was up, he upset that he is making too much money? I think he I was, feel like that's what the real problem was, dude. Emmanuel Sanders. I, I was talking to you about this when he was like talking to people. He's like, you know what the problem is? Just watch the film. We all, you know. We, you uh, you all know what the problem is. It's Joe Flacco, and well, he didn't say Joe. No, Flacco. he didn't say Joe Flacco. No, but you're you're he filling definitely in the definitely said Joe Flacco, but not he did not use those words. I'm not saying it's Joe Flacco. I'm not saying it's Joe Flacco, but Joe Flacco. Um, and and so yeah, I mean, it, I see. So John Elway felt personally attacked, almost like someone is saying to him, John Elway, yeah, you brought in Peyton Manning, any GM could have seen that Peyton Manning should be picked up and be your starting quarterback but other than that you have put hot steamy turds in at the quarterback position over almost and like over and almost over. like John Elway doesn't know how to find a quarterback I didn't say that you would not I say would that. never say that Emmanuel Sanders certainly implied it yeah and so he got he got shipped out now the the repercussions of this there's there's two teams here that have a big change. Obviously, uh, you, you can say goodbye to all the other wide receiver options in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, I, it, I agree with that. Yeah, so, and just real quick, up uh, ceiling move for Manuel Sanders, is it, is it higher? Is this a lateral move? How are you feeling about him if you have him? The more that I – my initial reaction was that it's a, it's a ceiling move, uh, that it, it, it's, it's good the, for him sure. because he goes to um, a possibly better quarterback, but a system – Kyle Shanahan's been looking for one. He tried to trade for Odell Beckham. He tried to trade for Antonio Brown. He drafted a couple. Wide he wants to get his wide receivers more involved. And now he's got a guy that's very capable of being a number one. However, the the running game is so good. Their defense has been outstanding. They're not passing the ball that much. When they do, it's not going to wide receivers. So I'm going to call this a lateral move. What okay. you've been getting from Emmanuel Sanders is still what the expectation is. I wouldn't trade for him. I wouldn't trade him away. Um, he He's the same. On the other side, though, for the Broncos, I think this is good news for Cortland Sutton. Everybody can see that in the sense that he's now the clear-cut one. He was, he, was he the 1A? Was he the 1B? He seems ready this year. Oh, Whereas as yeah. of last year, you were hoping it happened when, when Manuel Sanders went down to the injury. You thought, okay, this is Cortland Sutton's time. He just wasn't ready. It sure seems like he's ready now. It seems like he can take on – the defense's best guy. And he's not always going to win, but he's capable now in his second year. That being said, that will be a little bit harder for him. Maybe the first guy's been on Sanders and he's going to roll over. But Deshaun Hamilton will now take over the Emmanuel Sanders role. And he is no Emmanuel Sanders yet. But that that's his build. That's his, you know. And Hamilton is an excellent route runner. He is one of the players – that Matt Harmon, who works at Yahoo, he works with us in our Ultimate Draft Kit. He has the methodology of reception perception, seeing how good of a route runner a player actually is. And Deshaun Hamilton, much like Chris Godwin, who, if you're following, Harmon was the one telling us, you need to get Chris Godwin. This is back... I was going into his rookie, his rookie season. year. And so just having said that, Deshaun Hamilton was one of the players he really liked because he was such a refined tactician great route runner we'll see if that translates into fantasy value as he tries to take over for Manuel Sanders look John always told me that Joe Flacco's really good that's what I've heard all right John, John always like this this guy can throw the ball he's real tall he's super tall he can throw that's the important. ball he's, real far he's no Paxton Lynch but he's good <laughs> Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer says Adam Thielen is quote improving fast and now has a chance to play on Thursday after what looked like he went down like a sack of potatoes. I'm talking about Adam Thielen um, when he caught that touchdown pass. The, the catch was amazing, but you could tell that Adam Thielen was hurt. All accounts had him missing this week, short week, game on Thursday. 
Apparently trending towards playing. If you have Adam Thielen, Jason, are you starting him? Man, that that's a that's a tough start. So I had said yesterday, you know, my, my streamer, we gave a, a bunch of streaming options at yeah. quarterback. They're it's all a good. good. Week. Uh, Kirk Cousins was one, and then, I, and then afterwards I realized, hmm, this is a prime time game. Ooh, this is a prime time oh game no. for Kirk Cousins. So, but well, it's a prime time revenge game. It is. So you've got maybe those just wash each other. <laughs> the out. narratives, yeah, they cancel. Look, it's it's one of those situations when you've got a guy like Adam Thielen, if he's out there, he might be your best option, right? Because he was drafted as a one or as a two at the worst. He's been performing uh, very well. And so I think there's a situation on your roster where you have to. If I've got the luxury, if I've got a bunch of good guys in that tier for my last you know, wide receiver. I can't imagine you have someone as good as Thielen. So you're definitely going to have to go a tier down. So are you willing to go the tier down? Well, let's let's give some some actual names here. So if you're talking about Adam Thielen or DJ Chark, I would go okay. DJ Chark okay. in that situation. He's got a good matchup against uh, you know Calvin the, Ridley versus Seattle. No, I I don't think Matt uh, Matt Ryan will be there. So for okay. those reasons, I'm out. Ooh, Shark, Shark Tank. Tank. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Terry McLaurin, um, Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, same look, game. Xavier Rhodes uh, is is a tough matchup, so we've been told for years. I don't know that that's really true. It anymore. used to be very true oh, for, it's, for it's sure. But so did Josh as, Norman. We were yeah. just talking about how cornerbacks fall off a cliff, and I'm not sure that Xavier Rhodes is the same guy that he's been. So I would go Terry McLaurin. So yeah, I guess a, a tear down, I'm fine with. But I'm not going to. You know, Calvin Ridley without his quarterback, I'm not going to be like, okay, I'm so afraid of Adam Thielen if he plays that I would that I would pivot that far. Speaking to the Washington running backs, Chris Thompson remains sideline on Tuesday. Adrian Peterson with his grade one and grade two high and low ankle sprains <laughs> says he's going to play. I understand that Adrian Peterson has Wolverine blood and can heal. This would be a ridiculous situation for him to play on the short week against Minnesota I wouldn't play him no but I I actually I believe him <laughs> like I, I believe, believe that I, he I believe thinks that he's he, gonna play yes I believe that he he will put himself out there and play but I don't know how well a hobbled AP against Minnesota could be yeah it, it certainly ruins the Wendell Smallwood the Wendell Smallwood like I need to patch this boat <laughs> And I got to do it with Wendell Smallwood. If Peterson plays, it hurts that. I already covered the Zach Zenner news. A.J. Green, unlikely to play. And reminder, it's Wednesday. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Go check that waiver wire. Players were added. And so facto, players were dropped. Mm -hmm. Go look who was dropped because often you'll find a player on that waiver wire and go, wait, what? You know what? Mike, in just a few minutes, our waivers yes. will run. And you want to know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be celebrating whatever I got, and I'm going to be celebrating with a Pepsi. My man. Because Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level. Celebrate those waiver wire victories. It's not just the Hail Mary touchdowns or the defensive stops or a Super Bowl win. It's waiver wire pickups. I'll celebrate the drops. You know what else I celebrate? I got my kids to go to bed. Oh, crack open a Pepsi. Absolutely. Oh, celebrate. Were you doing high kicks in the kitchen? I got my kids to school on time. Oh, give me a Pepsi. Celebrate. See, here's the thing. You got games coming up this Sunday, right? We know this. We're already prepared. But do you have Pepsi? No. Oh. That's the oh. question. Because you got to go get a Pepsi in order to celebrate with a Pepsi. And here's the crazy thing. Whenever I go out and I get snacks for a game, like I'm, I'm going to go out. There's something about the process of preparing for yes. future celebrations yes. that makes those celebration payoffs so much better because I'm ready. I'm prepped. And here's the, here's the best part. Foot Clan. <laughs> oh, no, I lost. Oof. Oh, no, my team lost. Oof. I might not be celebrating, <laughs> but I'm going to make it okay. <laughs> I'm still cracking it open. I'm going to say, well, at least I've got you, Pepsi. You celebrate the fact that you were ready to celebrate. Right. You celebrate. Celebrate gotta... good times. All right. Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you, always be celebrating. All right. Let's get into this mid-season review, Jason. Take wait, a look. wait, 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 wait. Where's my drop, Mike? I didn't, dude, didn't have time. Okay. 
Well, guess what, Foot Clan? We get a live drop right here, right now, from Mike's mouth. Let's hear this mid-season review. Go! Mid-season review. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> what are you, a musician or something? Something like that. Look, mid-season review with the best intro of all time. Let's take a look at where we stand. Right now, the top quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, Carson Wentz, Kyler Murray, and Kirk Cousins. That rounds out the top 10. Late round quarterback is doing all right yet again. Five of the top 12 quarterbacks in, in the top 12 were drafted outside of the top 12 in your draft. You know, you've got Dak Prescott, who's uh, been outstanding uh, Matthew Stafford is is a top 12 guy right now. Lamar Jackson was the quarterback 14 at your draft, and he's the quarterback two. So, yeah, the late round drafting is great. And obviously, if you look at those first few draft picks, Patrick Mahomes, the number one guy going as early as the first round in some leagues in, in, in more of the leagues that our listeners probably play going in the third or fourth round. He's been a disappointment prior yeah. to the injury. I would say he's been okay. He's definitely been a disappointment. Prior to being injured, he was the quarterback five. That's not to say he was bad. He didn't even have a single game outside of the top 12. That's what I mean. He's been okay because would you rather have gone with that? That like I'm, I'm throwing out the Denver game. Quarterback 24, I'm throwing that out. He yeah, got he hurt. was injured. That's fine. So before that, he has he had always been a top 12 quarterback three straight games to start the season as a top five. Would you rather have done that or Deshaun Watson? Deshaun Watson has two number one weeks, but Deshaun Watson also has three weeks outside of the top 12, and they were not very far apart in drafts. Well, I mean, look, if I'm going to choose those two guys, but one of those guys gives me a an extra Leonard Fournette or Aaron Jones in the third round or Josh Jacobs – yeah, I'm going to take Deshaun Watson where I wasn't taking Pat Mahomes in the third round and I've got one of those other pieces. Now, obviously, if it, if in that third round you drafted Devonta Freeman, I mean, it's always, you know, yeah. are you going to draft I'm just well, saying but, that if, if you look at Patrick Mahomes as a disappointment, when you, you got old, him in the third, and Deshaun, Deshaun Watson was often going in the back of the fourth or the fifth. I know it's a, there's a little bit of draft equity disparity. but Yeah, w Watson's ADP was the fifth. I mean, between those two guys, I would rather – I mean – here, I'd rather have Dak Prescott. Okay. Like, that, you know, when we say late round, that's not pushing from Pat Mahomes to, to the, you know, the quarterback three. Also, the actual quarterback three in average draft position, Aaron Rodgers, I think everyone would say he's been a disappointment. He has been very disappointing. He went nuclear this last week, which is fantastic. Welcome back, Aaron Rodgers. We hope. Um, but a lot of those higher drafted guys have been disappointing for what you thought you were getting. Tom Brady has snuck his way back in. I, like many in the fantasy community, left Tom Brady for dead, and he is proving me to be wrong. Jason, someone in the top 12 that you think will finish outside of the top 12, example, last year, your favorite quarterback of all time, Mitch Trubisky was the QB 6 through week 7. Disgusting. Mostly on the, the heels of that, what was it, the 5 or 6 touchdown game? Against the Bucks, It was six. Was it six? It was six. But then from week on, he was the quarterback 21. He was absolutely useless for fantasy football. Who do you think has the highest odds of falling out? Who's who's the outlier? Who's the spy I think with the, the espionage plan against the top 12 quarterbacks? Yeah, uh, if, if I had to pick one of these guys to fall out, not with injury, so not a Mahomes or a Matt Ryan uh, who might miss a bunch of games, um, it would be Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady for me as well. Yeah. Take that, Tom. Oh, I'm You've so You've had so, it good so, for too long. Look at all my Super Bowl rings. Look at all my MVP trophies. Yeah? Well, I doubt you're a top 12 the second half of the year. Yeah, take that, loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's – look, Tom Brady, if you look at the last several years, he's I, – I, I wonder with these 40-year-old-plus quarterbacks, and we, we saw this a little bit with Drew Brees before, it's like as the season goes along – they tend to get a little worse. And I don't know if that's stress on the body or, or whatnot. Um, it's also not going to be the same cake schedule that the uh, Patriots have had. Plant man, no. Oh. I forgot we had that plant man the drop. The plant man. For Tom Brady. 
Tom Brady. If you remember, good for you. Baker Mayfield has been by far the biggest disappointment for fantasy football quarterbacks. He was drafted as the quarterback four, currently sitting at QB six, only one performance in the top 12. Well, hey. And look, I... I am on I'm on team Baker. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to I'm going to extend that. Baker Mayfield has been the biggest disappointment in the NFL. Like just taking fantasy out of it. The Cleveland Browns with their hype and the hope for Baker Mayfield has been it sucks. One, it hurts. Hurts my heart. 100% he is the biggest bust so far this year. Uh, you know, we we've talked about this before how how scary it felt to have him lead our he was the first name on our bus list in the Ultimate Draft. Game. Right, it was like, oh my gosh! But it's not, we Beckham. didn't expect this. No, no. But it, you had a guy that was very unproven on a poorly run franchise. It's very difficult to just say yes. What we all hope happens, which is he, uh, you know, changes the Browns franchise and and makes them a Super Bowl contender. That was that was a lot of hope, a lot of a lot of belief that we had not yet seen and he's he's been bad and here's the thing this week he oh, gets the patriots goodness i mean you might well, you might say he'll, he'll oh. be he might he might be seeing ghosts out there <laughs> <laughs> honestly with Poor that offensive Darnold. line with that offensive line for the browns i feel bad for what baker's about to get yeah you're probably right at the running back position christian mccaffrey Dalvin Cook, Austin Eckler. Those are your top three running backs. One Eckler, of these crushing it. One of these things is not like the others. First, before we talk about Eckler, obviously CMC. We don't need to talk about. He was drafted as the one or the two, and he is the one, and he is right the one. Um, but Dalvin Cook could very well be a, the, the fantasy MVP if it wasn't for the the Patriots. Like take them out. Right. The fantasy MVP of the beginning part of this season, Dalvin Cook was a guy where you could draft him um he was a second man, yeah some I, sometimes in the third i mean i mean it's usually crazy. usually a second round pick but you're getting a an absolute tip top uh workhorse bell cow back who's been phenomenal in the second round those you know those are the guys that help you win a, a championship and he's been so uber consistent he has literally never had a week the entire season where he's not a top 20 back and only twice has he not been a top 12 back? Does he finish top three? I think Zeke gets back up there. I don't know if Saquon can come all the way back, but that's rough. Uh, Christian McCaffrey will be there. So, yeah, I, th I, think, I think he Ooh. does. I think, you know, th when I look at the guys who could compete, I don't think Fournette has enough touchdowns to come up. I don't think Chubb season gets better after the return of uh, Kareem Hunt. So I expect Zeke, Dalvin Cook, and Christian McCaffrey to be the top three. If that, if Saquon could go ridiculous, maybe he could get there. So I, I have to take a quick aside here, Jason. Often people ask about our league of record, how things are going. Oh, the waivers yes. ran. Ty Johnson went for $85. Oh, that, not to me. <laughs> that's an 85%. That's a fab drop. I, I've, I don't know who, who did it. I don't know how badly they needed him. The bigger story, though, Jason. Hmm. Kenny Bills oh. went for... $55. Oh! And you know who Kenny Bills went to? Who? Andy? Andy. No. He's in, baby! Oh my goodness, Andy Holloway. Yes, has just dropped a 55 on our boy Kenny Bills. <laughs> this is This is great. a great moment of my life. Here's my favorite part. So, you know, I'm in my browser, I'm looking up th this uh, you know, auction report and I control F or command F in my case. Mm -hmm. Um and I I search the word Bills. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not his name. It should be. We're working on changing that across all platforms. But uh, it is stills. All wow. right. Back to the regularly scheduled program. Austin Eckler. Number three in a half point scoring format. He has been sensational. Even since uh, Melvin Gordon came back. 
running back 17 against Denver. Then he had the down week 42 against Pittsburgh where it was just tough sledding, but then right back at it, running back number five, Jason, my hot fire magma streaming from my mouth take in August in our bold predictions show. I said Austin Eckler will finish as a running back one. Will Austin Eckler finish as a running back one? I think he will because he's got a massive lead already. If you look at um, you look at Chris Carson right now, he is uh, the running back 11 at 100 fantasy points and half point scoring. Austin Eckler has 136 points. Eckler does not look like he's going to be uninvolved. And while if if you ask me, is is Eckler a running back one from this point to the rest of the season? I would say no. Okay. I don't believe he's a, a running back one. But on the total of the season, he, Eckler is what he was last year, which is a I think he's an improved I, version of that though. Sure. He is an improved version. They've found him more necessary, and Melvin Gordon just looks like trash. And so, yeah, I, th I think going forward, he's a, a high-end RB2 because of the pass-catching work. And, um, you know, some game scripts aren't going to be great for him. So I think you're going to see a few more outright busts the way that you had in Week 6. But you see that with most backs. But not mo most backs don't give you the option of having 10 receptions for 100 receiving yards and a touchdown. Aaron Jones, Zeke, Nick Chubb, Leonard Fournette. David Johnson, Mark Ingram, Derrick Henry, they round out the top 10. Yes, that means you did not hear the name Alvin Kamara. Super Camario sits at running back 12. And Chris Carson is sandwiched in between. He is the running back 11. Who in the top 10 or the top 12, if you want, Jason, who's there that will not be there? In the top 12 that will not be there at the end of the year is, you know, more than likely it's going to be an injury situation because of running back. Um, David Johnson seems scary for that, but if I were to take the the injuries away and say who does not finish there, I would say Mark Ingram. He's a guy that I was uh, I was interesting. I was lukewarm on coming into the season. As, as you know, when I do the stats on the season for the Ultimate Draft Kit, I thought he he's going to be sharing some time with Gus Edwards. Obviously, the the running back one for his team is his quarterback, um, but the schedule. For the Ravens, those first three weeks were unbelievable. I mean, Miami, Arizona, Kansas City, where he was, you know, the running back seven, the running back one, uh, I think that gave him a nice cushion. Look at the last four weeks. He's been the RB 38, 24, 14, and 35. Yeah, this last week against Seattle was really disappointing. If he's not scoring touchdowns, which he certainly can, but if, if that doesn't happen... I think you're going to be disappointed. And while he got off to a hot start with those first few weeks, uh, I, I expect him to come back to earth and be more of a, of a high-end RB2. My candidate would be Derrick Henry. So do you th – Derrick Henry makes a lot of sense, except if you believe the narrative that Ryan Tannehill is better for the, sure. for the Titans. Because if he's better and the offense is able to score, they're able to have leads – they're able to not just stack the box against him. That opens things up for Henry. That's He was in consideration for me as the top 12 guy that would fall out. There always will be one. But I guess that does say the fact that both of us had him at least in consideration. Would you sell high on Henry? No, I don't think you have to. Like, he's going to be consistent. I'm just not sure you're going to get top 10 production. Three weeks inside of the top 10. Other than that, he's outside of the top 20. So it's it talk about touchdowns. He he needs to have them. He doesn't get that passing work. He doesn't get that nice baseline of just catching three to four receptions a game. So he's he's my guy. I, I'm not gonna necessarily sell high. I'm willing to, but it's not that you need to bail out. That's not what I'm saying about Derrick Henry at the wide receiver. Or as, let's talk the disappointments. James Conner, my guy. He has been. Pretty disappointing. Has been very up and down. I'm well, going to take the pass. Yeah, you, <laughs> you have to. I know you're going to offer it to me, and I'm going to take it because Ben Roethlisberger has been gone since week one. I mean, we're about to talk wide receivers, and in the bus category, there has to be Juju Smith-Schuster. But and, and it stinks that we didn't get to see what a Ben Roethlisberger-led Steelers offense could have done. I, you and I both agree 
that they would have been they would have been a very good offense. Yes. Um, and he disagreed. We don't get to know who would have been right. What we can agree on is they would be considerably better than they are right now. Is significant. Considerable okay. isn't a big enough word. And James Conner is currently the running back fifteen. Yeah. It's not like he's the running back 42. So if he's significantly better, he's probably an RB1. So he's not, say, Joe Mixon? Now there's a real bust. There's an absolute – if you want someone to compete and say, hey, uh, uh, hey Baker, hold, hold my beer. <laughs> uh, that's Joe Mixon. He's been an, an unmitigated disaster. He's hurt your lineups because you continue to start him. Is it going to get better? How? That's a no. How? <laughs> I mean, okay, here's how it gets better. He gets more involved in the passing game. Should happen. They've got an offensive coach that should see that. He is talented. So that's how it gets better. Here's how it doesn't get better. They're not ever going to be in a lead, so they can't really run the ball. They're going to be down so much that they're not looking for just dump-offs in a competitive game and getting the running back more involved in the passing game. They're trying to throw downfield and catch up. Their offensive line is so unbelievably bad that they can't run the ball. It's not just Joe Mixon. Look at Giovanni Bernard's season You know, yards per carry. They're both complete trash. I don't – I mean, at this point, we have to consider Joe Mixon someone that you don't have to start. Are you sending a bag of chips to acquire Joe Mixon and stash him and hope things get better? Well, yes and no. Uh, I have made offers this last week for Joe Mixon and so Dynasty like you in, won't, in Dynasty leagues. You won't. Oh, okay, Dynasty long term. But I'm talking single season redraft. You would like sure. You, I'd offer a bag of chips. What if they're barbecue chips? Oh, those are so good. Are they baked or are they? Kettle. No. Oh, they're kettle. Then no, I'm keeping. I mean, the kettle barbecue chips. That's dumb. Really? Those are delicious. Kettle's better oh, than baked. Oh, th I thought we were disagreeing on the fact that the kettle chips are the way to go. Yes. Yes. And they're anything, great. anything under the, other than kettles is is uncivilized. R regular is okay. I mean, it's you know, okay, but it's, it's still uncivilized. Okay. It's it's a greasy, soggy mess sometimes. Yeah. All right. No, that's fair. So kettle's the way to go. Yes. So goes kettle. Joe Mixon. Regular <laughs> baked. I think that's a fair assertion of his value right now. Yes, in terms of chip equity, that would be correct. Hmm. Hold on. We got it. Fantastic. Wide receiver, Michael Thomas. See, he's still getting it done. Chris Godwin. Michael Chris Thomas is the number one wide receiver, and he has only two weeks as a wide receiver one. That's consistency. Two weeks as a wide receiver one? Yeah, he has two weeks inside the top 12. Oh, okay, As right. It, he, it, this last week, he was wide receiver seven. Uh, two weeks before that, he was the wide receiver two. Outside of that, he's you know he's not throwing he's, up these monster performances. He's in the 10 to 20 range. But he is every single week someone you can rely on, as consistent as they come. And, you know, he's the tortoise. He's winning the race. He's number one. Hey, uh, hey Pittsburgh. Yes, they, Mike, uh, this the, is Pittsburgh. Just want to just want to point out the New Orleans Saints who also lost their Hall of Fame quarterback. They're still getting it done. Um, Teddy Bridgewater, a a highly drafted and experienced quarterback, is is a lot better backup than a guy who was making his first start as a what was he third round pick. We can agree with that, but I'm just saying. And they but lost Mason Rudolph for a game too. Yeah, I still I stand by my statement. Chris Goblin, wide receiver two, getting it done. Amari Cooper, I wanted to highlight Amari Cooper here because I was I was not with the draft stock of Amari Cooper. The egg is definitely on my face, at least half an egg. Mm -hmm. At least half, I'm not going full egg. The milk is definitely on my face <laughs> at the end of the season as well. Because, look. He has finished outside of the top 30 three times. One of those was an injury game. It's He at least seems like he will be more consistent, though, this season. And he still he gave you that, that wide receiver three performance against Green Bay, a top 20 game against the Giants in Philadelphia. It's still not, to me, very, so how do you think about this, Jason? Do you, do you think about Amari Cooper as a top five wide receiver? Uh, do you yeah. put him there? Yeah, I, I do at this okay. point. I mean, he's he's been far more consistent than what we've come to expect of Cooper. 
I mean, I guess let's look at it, right? Michael Thomas is there. Um, I would still put Julio there, despite the fact that he has been disappointing over the last stretch. Hopkins is still going to be there. Hopkins is still there. Uh, would you put – who would you rather have, Cooper Cup or Amari Cooper? It's a Cooper off. Ooh, a Coop off? A Coop off. Oof. I – wow. I th I think it's Cooper Cup. I think it's Cooper Cup as well. The last two games have really scarred you because yes. the last two games he has been outside the top 40 wide receiver. One of those was in a game where Goff played well against Atlanta, but I still think Cooper Cup will be more consistent than Amari Cooper. Cooper Cup number four. DJ Chark holding it down dude, at number dude, five. Dude. Just getting it done enough to be a top five guy. Julio Jones, Keenan Allen. A bit disappointing for for when you drafted them to be high level players. Adam Thielen, luckily, l look, Adam Thielen, he was able to get it done those first few weeks, even when Kirk Cousins was not. Hopefully, this is a things have turned around now. I know he's injured, but I'm saying hopefully the offense has gone. You know what? We probably should throw it sometimes. Our team is better if we have these big plays in our arsenal so Adam Thielen weathered that storm and was able to hold on I think he will continue to improve Tyler Lockett Hopkins Stefan Diggs at 11 and Cortland Sutton Cortland Sutton is holding on at wide receiver 12 Jason is Cortland Sutton a wide receiver one at the end of the season that's a oh man what a, what a great question uh, there's a couple of guys that I think are not wide receiver ones who will finish as a wide receiver one like Mike Evans uh, is is in that group, but there are a couple people as wide receiver ones. I don't think we'll finish there, like Stephon Diggs, possibly Adam Thielen. Those guys are on the cusp. Cortland Sutton becomes the one. I think uh, I think he finishes as a low end wide receiver one this season. Okay, I think he finishes about where he is because what he's been doing is replicatable. It's based on targets. And it's not like he's had, you know, some of these guys like a Will Fuller just has one of these monstrous games and it inflates his numbers. That's not really what's happening for Cortland Sutton. He had a bad game in week two against Chicago, go figure. But outside of that, he's kind of been this wide receiver 20 guy. But if you're the wide receiver 20 every week, we saw, we see that with Michael, Michael Thomas. Thomas. At the end of the year, you're going to be much higher than the wide receiver 20. All right, the tight end position. Austin Hooper. Number one. Just like we all saw. Well, oh, to be fair to Austin Hooper, there was plenty of people in the Twitter sphere who believed in him. I was not one of those people. But you know who we did believe in, Jason? Oh, I do. Darren Waller exceeding all my hopes and my dreams. When I went all in on Darren, I am the Walrus sitting here at number two. He's been consistent. He has the big game potential. Gruden coming out again, emphasizing the tight end position is the engine for our offense. Darren Waller locked and loaded. By the end of the year, he will remain a top five guy to me. Oh, 100%. He's locked in as a top five guy barring injury because his target volume is there. And and it's not just lip service with Gruden saying that tight end runs the, the Raiders. Look at uh, Derek Carrier. It's not even just and, Waller, yeah. And, and uh, the island of Dr. Moreau. I mean, these guys are are getting – I mean, look, as the as a Waller owner, we're both Waller owners yes. together and apart. Um, you watch those Raiders games, and how many times are we just really, really angry when another big tight end catches the ball and he's not number 83? Yeah. It's too much. Yes. So, Gruden, if you're listening, all of them go to Waller. Yeah, why not? Carr, if you're listening, all of them go to Waller. I totally agree the with that. The Walrus can eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen him? They're huge. He's a big guy. Travis Kelsey, number three. Mark Andrews, somehow holding on to number four here. He came out of the gate scorching hot. Tight end three, tight end one. Followed up a couple weeks later by tight end nine. But there's been some, some ups and downs. And by downs, I mean the ball hitting his hands. And falling down onto the ground. So here's the cool thing about how bad Mark Andrews sucked last week. He's played his entire life. At, he's played football since, you know, he was a little boy. Right. And he's a good pass catcher. 
everyone has bad games. This is not a situation where, where oh, w- when you're in the game and it's in your head, of course, you, the next target, you're like, I have to catch it so bad that, that you, you know, you, you, you might lose. Sorry, I'm distracted here because I'm looking at our t- I'm looking at our, at our set, uh-huh. the mid-season review. And, Wait a minute. And we have given ourselves on this graphic four out of five stars. What? What is this graphic that has four you're, out of five stars? You made this. <laughs> you're not reviewing yourselves here. I still want five stars on there, Al. You have five stars. These players we're reviewing don't all have five stars. All I know is the empty star is literally on <laughs> me, Al. I have zero stars. Andy has a star. Mike has two stars according to this graphic. I have zero stars. I got star nips is what I got. <laughs> oh, that's – oh, little <laughs> NSFW, Mike. Uh, all right, where were we? Um, They've got star power. All right, Mark Andrews, better things are ahead. But Mark Andrews, top five tight end at the end of year? Um, I'm going no. I'm going to go no as well because when I look at the names, I don't think Cooper's going to drop out. Waller will be there. Travis Kelsey will be there. Zach Ertz is questionable. Evan Ingram. So I think it's going to be between Zach Ertz and Mark Andrews. Okay. And the and that's really debatable. Evan Ingram, despite the hot steamy turd that was the game against Arizona, he has been outstanding for your fantasy team. Zach Ertz, very interesting. It, look, I, I brought this up. I think we weren't on, on the show. I think this was just kind of me lamenting because I've got Zach Ertz in our league of record and I'm – Super pissed. Like, he sucks. He's not that good. And he's the tight end six. But he doesn't suck. No, of course he doesn't actually suck. But on a week-to-week basis, you need the tight end. You need a tight end one, right? Like, right. Your, your roster should have a tight end one. And when you stream tight end, sometimes you can manufacture that. Two of the seven weeks, Zach Ertz has been a tight end one. And it doesn't take much to be a tight end one. He's, he's like the Michael Thomas, except the sucky version. Because... You don't want you don't want the tight end 17, 13, 14, 19, 21 the way that you would want that as the wide receiver. If if it was wide receiver 17, 13, 14, 19, 21, you'd be like this guy's great. That's crap for a tight end and those are the other 5 weeks outside of the top 12 for Zach Ertz. And so you know what? I'm going to change my answer. I think Mark Andrews will have a better Whoa. will finish ahead of Zach Ertz and he will not Zach Ertz finishes as the tight end six. What's interesting about Zach Ertz is we talked about, okay, the target volume has to go down. It seems like the target volume is okay, but it's actually fantastic. Right now he has 59 targets. That would be tied with Allen Robinson. That's three fewer targets than Julio Jones. It's more targets than Robert Woods and Mike Evans. When we looked, I was surprised, and I was like, well, how did I rank him? Because I, I, you know, I drafted him, uh, or I, I traded for him at the draft. And um, I looked at my rankings, and they were almost identical. His pace on the season were almost identical down to the reception count and yard on the dot, but the one difference was touchdowns. He's not getting touchdowns. And I think that's where Dallas Goddard is making a problem. I mean, we've seen Dallas Goddard drop two touchdowns. Right. Those are red zone targets that are eating away from Zach Ertz's red zone targets. If he doesn't get the touchdowns, it's, you know, you're not going to be happy. Will Disley, RIP, Big Montana. <sighs> George Kittle, Gerald Everett, Greg Olson round out the rest of the top 10. A player that will not finish in the top 10, Jason. Will Disley. Whew, that was easy. Uh, you know what's crazy? I don't think that's for sure. He, might. <laughs> he could he could end up staying in the top ten. Yeah. Missing the, I mean, it's not it, likely. Yeah, not likely at this point. But Greg Olson would be my vote. Even I mean, this, that's the low hanging fruit to me. He's barely hanging on to a top ten. I would say the low hanging fruit is Gerald Everett. He's had. I, I couple- think he'll continue to. He'll he'll put up enough big games here in the second half of the season that he'll finish in the top ten. I mean, if he continues, the last month he's been very good. Three out of four good games for Gerald Everett. I just don't think that continues. Thursday Night Breakdown. Washington, one and six. Awesome. Takes on Minnesota, five and two. We have a 42 point over under. The Vikings are favored by 16 points. Wow. Um, well, that's because the Redskins aren't good. But 
not just on offense, also defense. That's a fair point. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, the line is large for a reason. The Vikings at home have a great running defense or a, a great running game. The Redskins do not have a great rushing defense. So this should be a, a game where Dalvin Cook eats. He's going to be fine. Um, I do think Kirk Cousins, I'm tempering my expectations. His, you know, there, there are some things. Ten that touchdowns are, in the last three games for Kirk Cousins. He's been awesome. And, and I, I talked about him yesterday as a great streaming option because the Redskins are trash against quarterbacks. Don't let the last two weeks' numbers fool you when they played Miami and then they played the mud. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this could be a really good game for Kirk Cousins. But the whole narrative joke of Kirk Cousins and Andy Dalton in primetime sucking, it's not just a narrative, right? It's a narrative that is based upon – history and performance and they have underwhelmed in those matchups so I do temper expectations a little bit when the lights are on some guys fold some guys are better in in those primetime slots I think that this is a game where you're going to see a lot of Dalvin Cook and you're going to see a lot of him running like not being handed the ball but uh, like in a in a full sprint so running like running backs do yes Excellent analysis. Thank Case you. Keenum, no thank you. We have the double revenge game narrative, Jason. There's a whole lot of stores on this narrative street that are open because you have Kirk Cousins against his former team, Washington. Mm -hmm. You have Adrian Peterson Ooh. versus the place where he carved the stone of the statue. Uh -huh. that, the Adrian Peterson story was built in Minnesota. Talk about Case Talk about Case. Oh my gosh! Case Keenum. Case Keenum revenge. Booted for Kirk Cousins. He he carried them to the second round of the playoffs, this and he was jettisoned. The revengeiest game of all time. I can't even handle it. There's so much revenge. Here's the thing. I actually wonder if Case Keenum is you. You say forget about it, but in a streaming matchup, forget about it. In a two-quarterback league, I think he's interesting. I mean, I, this is not a guy I would look to go to in my one-quarterback leagues, but the Vikings' defense isn't the, you know, look, here's a comparison, right? Last year, the Vikings' defense, they were number two against quarterbacks. They were number three against wide receivers. It was it was a forget-about-it situation. This year, it hasn't been that way. Uh, this year, the quarterbacks, they're middle of the pack, 15th, and wide receivers, they're right now at 25th. But take the four-touchdown Marvin Jones game from last week out, they were still 17th. And now they were 17th, and they gave up four touchdowns to Marvin Jones, which actually did happen. Fair. So Terry McLaurin is yes. a guy that I'm happy to play in this matchup. You might be afraid to play him. He He's had a, you know, a down game, obviously, in the Mud Bowl. Um, I'm going with Sludge Bowl. Sludge? Mud, yeah, the, the Mud Bowl is a real game that is it's noted in history. Okay. This is the Mud Bowl. I'm going with the Sludge Bowl. I'm in. Where We have coined the term here on the Fantasy Footballers. The Sludge Bowl. Yeah. And this is where we'll find out there's a Sludge Bowl. But I don't know about it. I'm on it. Look, Terry McLaurin, he's in for me. You take out the Sludge Bowl, seven-plus targets and 51 yards in all of his games. He is showing out for a rookie wide receiver. Stephon Diggs, you're playing him. Adam Thielen, we kind of covered all of that stuff. Kyle Rudolph, 5 for 58 in touchdown on six targets, but the previous six weeks combined, 9 for 72 with a zero. Are you chasing at all of last week? He's No, I'm not chasing last week, but he is interesting if Adam Thielen can't go. Because if Adam Thielen, the main slot guy, can't okay. go, I think that there will be targets going Kyle Rudolph's way. If Adam Thielen is in, then I'm probably staying away. And we're going to – this is one of those things where – this because it's Thursday night football, you've got to be prepared, and I don't know that you can be prepared if Adam Thielen ends up being a game time decision. If you've got waivers that run in the morning, this is a nighttime game. In which case, my preparation will be to not go with Kyle Rudolph. Thank you for joining today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. Look, make sure you're following this show everywhere. We're on Instagram.com/slash Fantasy Footballers. You can find me. On Instagram, at FFHitman. Find Jason at JasonFFL, at Andy Holloway. Look, if you're listening on Apple, please leave us that rating and review. You can also listen to this show ad-free on Stitcher Premium. 
Jason, tomorrow's show, we're going to break down these matchups. We're going to hit those starts of the week. Mm. All sorts of fantasy goodness left for this week. Hope your waivers went the way that you wanted them to go. And we will see you tomorrow on the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, Jason Moore, best friend of Wednesday, October 23rd. Forever. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason, never forget, support for today's show comes from Pepsi. Pepsi taking all NFL celebrations to the next level, the Hail Mary touchdowns, the defensive stop on the goal line, or even the Super Bowl win, Jay. Can you imagine? I unfortunately have to only imagine. But in that moment... But if you did... Oh, I'm cracking over that Pepsi. Look, Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, they remind you, always be celebrating.